Generally, changes that you make to a database are small. It might be a customer's address that needs to be changed, or a record might need to be added when a customer places an order. Sometimes, however, changes might need to be made to a large set of records. So, for example, if you have an increase in price across a range of products. If that's the case, then you would definitely need an action query. An action query is a query that modifies data in the underlying table or tables. And instead of just selecting the data, it's going to perform some operation on the data instead. So there's four different types of action queries that I'm going to be showing you. There's the update query, which can update records in a table or tables. There's the delete query, which will take records away from a table. There's the append query, which will take records from one table and append it to another. And then there's the make table query, which makes a whole new table. So the first type of query I'm going to be showing you is an update query. Here, I'm going to create a query that updates the price of certain products. But the first thing that I want to do is make a backup. So I'll go ahead and close my products table. And to make a backup copy of the products table, all I need to do is to copy and paste it from the navigation pane. So I just want to make sure that products is selected and I'm going to control C on my mouse and or you could right mouse click and choose copy and then I'll control V or you can right mouse click and paste. The name pops up as copy of products, but you can change the name to whatever you see fit. Maybe you'd rather have it say products backup, whatever you think is best. And then there are the paste options of the structure only. So that's going to give you all your same columns and all the same properties that run behind those columns, but no data. There's structure and data. And then there's append data to an existing table. Well, I want to use structure and data, of course, for this backup. So I'm going to leave everything how it is and then just go ahead and click on OK. And if I scroll up a little bit in my navigation, you can see it's right there, copy of products. All right, let me go back to the original table really quickly, the products table, just to point out that there are 45 records right now. And what I want to do for this example is to change the list price of not every single product, but just the chocolate products. I'm going to raise those by 10%. Now I already have a query in place that does that, so let me go ahead and navigate to that query. I've created a query called chocolate, and I'm going to open it up in design view by right mouse clicking and going to design view. And if you're following along, all I did to create this query was I made a brand new query that just has the products table in it. I brought in product name and list price, and the criteria for the product name is asterisk chocolate asterisk. And let me just run this just to show you how it looks. I'll hit run. So there are two chocolate products in the products table. All right, let me head on back to design view. Now this is just a regular select query. And I can tell by looking on my design tab, it select here is highlighted. I want to turn this into an update query. So all I have to do is click on update. And that changes our grid down here at the bottom. You'll notice now there is an update to row. So what I want to do here is to go to the update to row that's underneath list price. And I'm going to type in here that the list price is going to update to whatever the current list price is times 1.1. Remember, I want to update the price by 10%. But before I type this in and run it, let me go back to products real quick because I just want to point out that the chocolate biscuit mix has a list price of 920 and the chocolate has a list price of 1275. All right, let me go back to my query and in my update to, I'm going to change that to list price and I can just double click on my little tooltip times, which is my asterisk, 1.1. All right, so that's it. I'll head on back to the design tab and I'll hit run. And I get a dialog popping up that says that I'm going to update two rows. And once I click on yes, I can't undo this or reverse the changes. Are you sure you want to update these records? And of course I do, so I want to go ahead and click on yes. All right, now that's it. Now if I want to take a look to make sure that the changes actually were made, I don't want to click on the run button again. Because what that's going to do is of course run my query again. Now it already updated those fields and it added 10%. If I run it again, it's going to add another 10% onto that already added 10%. And every time I run this query, it's going to keep adding 10% 
to the new price, not the old price. So if I want to take a look before I close this query, I can click on view, not run, but view. And I can see there, that's my new price. All right, so I'll head on back to design view. And maybe I think that the price of chocolate is just going to keep going up in the market. So if I want to save this query, I'd go to file and save as. I'm going to save object as and click on save as. And this time I'm going to put a UPD in front of my name and call it chocolate price increase. And make sure it's saved as a query. I'll click on OK and it's saved. So now if I go ahead and close the query and now take a look at my chocolate, it's at 1403. And if I take a look at the biscuit mix, it's up to 1012. So it worked. And taking a look at my queries, if I scroll down a bit, now I see there is my update query. And just remember, I warned you that if you run this update query again, it's going to again increase the current list price for chocolate by 10%. So just to show you, I'm going to go ahead and double click on it. It says it's going to modify my table. I'll click on yes. Are you sure you want to update two rows? I'll click on yes and refresh this table. And you can see here now the chocolate is 1542 and the chocolate biscuit mix is now up to 1113. So when you're creating action queries, just be careful because when you run them more than once, it's going to, of course, run that action more than once. But you saw it really wasn't hard to create an action query. I just went into the design view for a query and changed it from select to, in this case, update.